Hey third grade, it's Tuesday the 21st of April. Uh, we have a new moon tonight. It means you can't really see the face of the moon. Um, it's going to be a sunny day in the low 70s, so it's a perfect day to get outside and play when you're all done. The materials you're going to need for me today are you're going to need your workshop book. That's your reading and writing workshop book. And you're going to need your packet when we meet at 1030 because we're going to talk about a story. Um, you're going to need your math test for Unit 9. That's the Unit 9 assessment. And when I'm done with the Unit 9 assessment, you're going to stick around with me and you're going to need somebody to have a turn and talk with because we're going to go over the vocabulary cards for this week, okay? It's important that you hear all eight definitions and use them in your own sentences so that you're ready for the test when we get to the end of the week. And so that when you see the words, when we use them throughout the stories this week, you know what they mean, okay? All right. So let's get started. We're going to get started with the Unit 9 test. I can't believe we're done with Unit 9. That means we have finished third grade with everyday math. So we'll still keep practicing math until the end of the school year, but we're wrapping up our, our Unit 9 and the end of the um, everyday math uh, workbook for this year. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So I'm going to go through this with you. I need you to listen really carefully and make sure you include all the parts I'm asking for. I'm going to give you some really good tips about what I'm looking for and make sure you listen. Remember, showing your work is part of the problem. So I need to see the work um, in order to give you full credit for the problem because a lot of these problems are you get points for each part that you uh, work on and get correct, including showing your work. Okay. All right. So um, as I read, like I said, I'm going to read. You pause when you're um, ready to work on that problem. And when you're ready to go on to the next problem, you can um, unpause and I'll tell you about the next problem, okay? And like I said, when you're done with this, don't go away. Stick around because you need to stay with me for the turn and talk for the vocabulary words, all right? Okay. All right. So number one says, for each number sentence, fill in the blank with a factor from 1 to 10. Will you underline that part? Fill in the blank with a factor from 1 to 10 that makes the sentence true. All right, so I'm gonna read this to you. Five times seven is less than seven times which number from one to 10? And you can solve for five times seven to see how you can make that number sentence true. So this blank line needs to have a number from one to 10 that would make the sentence true. Five times seven, find that product, is less than seven times what? All right, part B, four times three, go ahead and solve for that is greater than four times what? And finally, this one has two blank lines so you have to fill out. Eight times six, find the product of eight times six, is less than these two numbers multiplied together. Okay, so the product of eight times six is gonna be less than the product of these two numbers multiplied together. And you're gonna pick numbers between one and 10. Now, are there more than one, is there more than one right answer for each problem? Yes, there is. So, and that's, and I know all the right, I know I have a little list of all the right answers. So just make sure your number sentence is true and I'll check it, okay? Pause the video. And when you're ready to go on to number two, I'll be here. Okay, hi, we're ready to go on and we're gonna read the directions for the next section. This says, for problems two through four, write a number letter, a number model, excuse me, with a letter for the unknown. So we're used to doing that. When we started the year, when we didn't know something, we used a question mark to represent the unknown. Now we're using a letter, and the letter needs to represent what we're looking for. So let's pay attention as we do that. Okay, so after you write a number model with a letter for the unknown, you're going to solve the problem. Show me your work here. And then you're going to write the answer here, and then you're going to write another number model with the answers so we know the answer makes sense, okay? All right, so number one says, oh, excuse me, number two says seven blue jays each have a mass of about 80 grams. What is their total mass? That word total is a big tip that we're multiplying here, okay? So seven blue jays each have a mass of 80 grams. What is their total mass? So here we go. We need to find the total of 7 times 80. Now you can use a basic fact when you show your work, 7 times 8, and then extend it to find the product of 7 times 80. All right, now it says use a letter for the unknown. So what are we looking for? We're looking for their mass. And you might be tempted to write M for mass, but actually we're measuring their mass in grams. So we should write G for grams. So when you write the unknown, you're going to write G for grams. Okay, go ahead and solve for that please. And show me your work. 
When you're ready, you can go on to number three. Okay, are you ready for number three? Here we go. All right, number three is a, a big word problem and there's some extra information in it that you don't need. So um, don't let that throw you off and you need to look at, try to figure out, make sure you know what you're looking for so you, we can, um, we'll read this together, okay? Together, 80 great blue herons have a mass of about 240 kilograms. So we need to know their mass together. That 240 is important. One California condor has a mass of about eight kilograms. About how many eight kilogram um, California condors would it take to equal the mass of the group of herons? So we need to know the mass of the group. That's 240. And we know that one condor weighs eight kilograms. We need to know how many condors would equal 240 kilograms. So we're actually looking for how many condors, okay? So you can do this problem two ways. Okay, all the herons together weigh 240. And we want to know how many condors that weighed 8 kilograms each would take to equal 240. So you could divide 240 divided by how many equals 8. And you could use a basic fact, 24 divided by what equals 8 and extend it. Or you could use a missing factor program uh, problem. Excuse me. You could say how blank number of condors times 8 kilograms each equals 240. Okay, and then you ask yourself, what number times eight equals 24, and extend it to find what number times eight equals 240. All right, now in that pro problem, we're looking for California condors, so you're gonna put a C when you're looking for the answer for California condors, or you could just write C for condors. All right. All right, I just gave you lots of help with that one. Take your time solving it. All right, when you're ready, go on to number four with me, okay? All right, number four says about how many 50 gram northern cardinals, so we're looking for how many northern cardinals, have a mass equal to one 500 gram Atlantic puffin. So how many of those 50 gram cardinals weigh 500 grams? Okay, if you wanted to turn this around and make a division, you could do the same thing. You could say 500 divided by what equals 50. Okay? And you can use basic fact to solve this one too. All right, and what does it say we're looking for? We're looking for car northern cardinals. So you could write N for northern cardinals for your missing information, or you could just write C for cardinals. So I'm not going to be too picky about that. But remember, we want the letter to relate to the, what we're looking for, for the unknown. Okay? In this case, the unknown is how many cardinals. So C for cardinals for number four. All right, pause the video, and when you're ready to go on, start it again. Okay. Now I'm going to work on number five with you. Number five has us using the break apart strategy. You must show me your work down here. They always say you may, Mrs. Dixon says you must, right? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I want you to show me those area diagrams to show the break apart strategy, okay? So it says use a break apart strategy to solve each problem. You need to use drawings and number models um, show, to show me your thinking. So we have five times 32 equals what? So we're gonna draw an area model, that's when you draw the boxes. For 5 times 32. Now, what do you think an easy way to break 32 to make it easier to multiply? Let's break it into 30 and 2. I think that'd be super easy. So, because 30 plus 2 equals 32, I can multiply 5 times 30, and then I can multiply 5 times 2, and then I'm going to add those two uh, products together to find the t final answer for 5 times 32. So go ahead and show me all three steps. You're going to need three number models. One for 5 times 30, one for 5 times 2, and a third one where you add the two products together to find the total for 5 times 32. Go ahead and do that for A. You can pause me. OK. 
Okay, for B, we're solving 3 times 61. And we're going to do that the same way we just did the other problem. Write your area model. And you're going to break 61 into 60 and 1. Okay. Then you need to write three number models for me. 3 times 60. And remember, use a basic fact 3 times 6 to solve 3 times 60. So 3 times 60, 3 times 1. Add those two products together and find the total, which will give you the answer to 3 times 61. That's part B for number 5. You can pause my video, and then we're going to go on to part C on the next page. All right, for part C, they said Ellen drew a rectangle to solve 8 times 64, and she did everything right. You just need to tell me the steps she took. So I'm going to write some sentence starters for you, um, and I'm going to put them... I'll take a picture of them, too, and I'll put them in, in our Google Classroom. But it says, explain how Ellen solved the problem. So one, I want you to say first, and I'll show you this in a minute. Ellen broke 64 into which two smaller and easier to multiply numbers? So you can go ahead and write that sentence. Ellen, first, Ellen broke 64 into what and what? All right, then she multiplied. So the next sentence is then she multiplied, and she multiplied both parts. She broke 64 into two parts, so she multiplied both parts. So look at the chart. Look, I mean, sorry, look at the area model. And you're going to write both number models. And that's another sentence, okay? Then she multiplied what times what equals what, and what times what equals what. Now when she was done with those, she took those two products, just like we've been doing for the last couple problems, and she added the products together. So we're going to say, last, comma, she added, and you're going to write blank plus blank equals what's the total of those two products, okay? So last she added, what plus what equals what? Now we're not done, because now the last thing you're going to say is now she knows. You're going to say 8 times 64 equals what? And that's your total. That's your last sentence. Now she knows 8 times 64 equals what? What's the total of 8 times 64? All right. So like I said, you can slow, you can Pause my video, catch up to this. You can also look at Google Classroom. I'm going to take a picture of this and put it on Google Classroom for you. All right, and we're last, we're ready for number six. All right, and you can pause until you're ready for number six. Here's number six. It starts raining at 6.40 a.m. and stops at 9.15 a.m. How long did it rain? Show your thinking. You may use an open number line. Well. You, sh you must use an open number line, okay? Um, and then you're going to tell me the hour and minutes. I want everybody to, I, it's saying you may. I'm asking you to do that because I need you to show me that A, you know how to use the open number line. Um, B, that you can solve for elapsed time, okay? All right, so remember when you draw the open number line, we start at 6.15 because that's when it starts raining. And you're going to find the elapsed time between 6.50, oh, sorry, 6.40. I said the wrong words. From 6.40 a.m., and it stops raining at 9.15 a.m. So you're going to find the amount of time that passes between 6.40 a.m. and 9.15 a.m. Now remember, hills are represent minutes and mountains represent the hours. So solve that, then total the hours and minutes, and write that down here. Blank hours and blank minutes between 6.40 a.m. and 9.15 a.m. Okay? Now you're ready for the back. And you're going to go ahead and complete the self-assessment. Tell me how you felt about the different skills you learned um, in this unit. And like I said at the beginning, take pictures of each page, nice clear pictures, please, of each page and send it to me so I can check it and grade it, okay? And that's our Unit 9 test. Now, before you go away, um, I need you to find somebody in your house because we need to do a turn and talk. So, like I said, 
Um, after your math test this morning, you're going to go ahead and read a story about a woman named Dolores Huerta. We're on Unit 5, Week 4. We're in the um, workshop book. Okay? And you're going to go ahead and open up to the story. And here it is. You're going to read all of our stories. First of all, go ahead and read about citizenship. Um, if you have your book handy, you can get it out now because then you can turn and you can see the same pictures I'm going to show you if you want to. Those are all our vocabulary words for this week. So we're, go ahead and read about citizenship. And we're going to talk about this week, our essential question is, what do good citizens do? So remember, we're learning um, about, in Unit 5, our big idea is, what are ways people can take action and good citizens take action to help others? So what do good citizens do? And we're going to talk about um, citizenship this week, okay? Um, so when you're done with that, you're going to read the biography. So here are the vocabulary. So first of all, you're going to go to pages uh, 372 and 373 and read about citizenship and talk, with those, talk about it with your mom or dad. Then right now I'm going to go over the uh, vocabulary cards with you. And when I'm done with that, you're going to go on and read this biography about Dolores Huerta, okay? All right. Now remember, before you start reading the biography, I'm going to tell you some quick things about biographies. They tell the, a true story of a person's life, and they go in order from early in their life um, throughout their life. They're written by another person. And they include text features such as timelines. Timelines are, remember, those are lines of, that show important events throughout history, throughout somebody's life. Photographs, because they're true stories. And captions, okay, that tell you more about the photographs. All right, so uh, like I said, I'm going to go over the vocabulary cards, and then I'd like you to read this biography, Dolores Huerta. When we get together at, the, um, at 1030 for our Google Hangout, you need to have this packet. It's in the Unit 5 Week 4 packet. It's after the grammar pages. So you'll find that, and there's going to be four pages we're going to work on together uh, with this about the story, and then a quick little biography words, um, little uh, fun, like, little quiz activity that we're going to do, an unscrambling activity that we'll do that together at 1030, okay? All right. So let's do our turn and talk really quickly. All right. Today our first word is citizenship. Citizenship is the position of being a citizen of a country with all the rights, duties, and privileges that come with it. Um, in this picture, these children are planting a tree in their community, and that's showing good citizenship because they're helping their town. Can you think of something you could do to show good citizenship in your neighborhood? I know if we were at school, you'd be showing good citizenship uh, to your classmates and the other children in our school, but since we're not together, can you think of how to show good citizenship in your own neighborhood? Okay, I'm going to turn and talk using citizenship. Okay, our second word for today is continued. When something is continued, it goes on without stopping. Justin continued to read his book all afternoon. So the, on, um, the opposite of continued would be like paused or stopped, right? If you keep doing something for a long period of time, you continue to do it. So he continued to read his book all afternoon. All right? I would like you to think about a time when you continue to do something for a long period of time. Then you maybe practice a sport for a long time, or maybe you've read a book for a long time. Maybe you continued to read for a long time. Okay? With a partner, will you uh, turn and talk using the word continued? And tell your partner and then listen to them about something you continued to do for a long time. Okay? Our next word is daring. Uh, something that is daring is courageous and bold. This penguin making a dive into the sea is daring because there might be predators down there waiting for him. All right. Um, so the penguin jumping into the sea is courageous and daring. Have you ever done something daring? Will you turn and talk with a partner about a time when you did something courageous and bold and daring? Use the word daring in your turn and talk. Okay. Our next word is horrified. Oh my goodness, look at these two. When you, someone is horrified, he or she is filled with great fear, horror, or dislike. Paul and his mother were horrified by the scary movie. 
So what does it mean to be horrified? It means you're really scared. You're filled with fear. Can you think about a time maybe you watched something scary or you felt really scared? Can you turn and talk with your partner? How did you look when you were horrified? <laughs> okay. So turn and talk about a time you felt horrified. All right. Our next word is participate. Okay. So to participate means to join with others or take part in something. In this case, Barb and her friends like to participate in sack races at the picnic. Have you ever done one of those where you jumped in a burlap bag and you tried to cross the finish line first? Okay. So these children are participating in a sack race at a picnic. With your partner, can you list some school activities that you participate in? Or maybe some after school activities like soccer or um, chess club, something else you do after school, something you participate in. So turn and talk using the word participate. Okay, our next word is proposed. To propose something means to have suggested someone or something to others for their consideration. Mom proposed that they look online to find an answer to Tina's question. Have you ever proposed something to your family? Maybe you proposed to go out to a certain restaurant for dinner or to do something for the weekend, something fun. So turn and talk using the word proposed. Okay, the next one is unfairness. Okay, I see, some, I see a prefix and a suffix in this word. So un is a prefix. We all know that means what? Not. That's right. Fair is the base word or the root word. So fair means to treat equally. And ness is like a state of being. So unfairness means they don't think that this is fair. It's not fair. All right. So unfairness is a state of being unfair or unjust. The baseball player discussed the unfairness of the referee's call. What word means the opposite of unfairness? Right, fairness, right? Okay, so the baseball player is discussing what he sees as the unfairness of the referee's call with the referee. Maybe he can convince the referee to make a call he thinks is more fair. Can you turn and talk with your partner about a time you thought you were experiencing unfairness in a situation? Use the word unfairness and tell your partner about a time you thought you were experiencing unfairness okay all right our last word of the uh, for the week is waver and if you waver you stop for a moment because you're unsure so in this case Ted is in a spelling bee and he maybe forgot the answer so he started to waver he paused before going on so you can see he was doing well at the spelling bee but then he had to spell a hard word so his confidence started to waver can you tell a partner about a time when you're... <gasps> oh, are you... Sorry, I think my thing just went out. Hey, can you tell your partner about a time when your confidence started to waver? Okay. That is the end of my turn and talk. I don't know if I went dark for a little while. My screen got dark. So um, I hope that you guys, that's why I gasped. I was like, because oh, I'm at the end of my video for today. So um, I'm all done. I'll see you guys at 1030. And um, make sure you have your workshop book and your packet and a pencil ready to go. All right. Good luck on the unit nine test. I'll see you later.